fact, in an era here in the U.S. where the inequality gap has become ever more pronounced, assumptions are frequently made about the behavior of the wealthier. The focus of economic correspondent Paul Salman's conversation tonight. Power comes from sharing, says Professor Docker Keltner, who studies economic behavior. But the title of his new book is The Power Paradox. We gain power by advancing the welfare of other people, and yet when we feel powerful, it turns us into impulsive sociopaths and we lose those very skills. Hunger and homelessness are growing problems for thousands of college students across this country, particularly among those who are the first in their families to pursue a degree. Anthony is a junior at the University of California, Berkeley, one of the nation's leading public universities. We're expecting long nights in the libraries and tough exams, but what we're really facing is, you know, sleepless nights worrying about rent. I can skip breakfast, skip lunch, can even skip dinner, and I've just saved myself close to 30 or 40 dollars. Fabrizio Mejia is assistant vice chancellor for student equity and success at Berkeley. What it means for our institution in particular in the UC system is that uh, we have to invest in the programs that are going to welcome the students in, that are going to get them through, that are going to get them to succeed. By editing DNA, we can not only eliminate the chance of disease, but also change how a person develops. CRISPR is the perfect machine for chopping up DNA. Professor Jennifer Doudna is one of the original researchers who realised the potential of CRISPR. I was telling my son about this molecule, about Cas9, and I was telling him that, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's like a little machine that goes into the cell and it floats around the DNA until it finds a site that matches its RNA, and then it makes a cut, you know, and then it falls off and then the cell can repair the cut. And so he looks at me and he says, Mom, you mean you could change my DNA? Hello and welcome to Sustainable Energy, the show that looks at how innovation can help us power our lives more efficiently. Professor Arpad Horvat works at the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at University of California, Berkeley. We saw earlier in the programme lots of different new fuels and new ways of, of propelling cars. Do you think one is going to come forward and, and take over the others? Most likely biofuels. They are already here, even though we haven't seen the best of the biofuels. The existing uh, biofuel uh, production system is unsustainable. The future will have to be based on plant waste or household waste or some other waste uh, materials. I'm very excited about this. You know we love to focus on companies with disruptive technologies, game-changing business models. They're transforming particular industries. So let's sit down with Dikhil Aurora and Alejandro Velez. They're the founders and co-CEOs of Back to the Roots. This is uh, uh, one crazy idea that started out at UC Berkeley. We heard this random fact that you could potentially grow mushrooms on coffee ground waste and nobody had ever done it. I think everyone's realizing that there's the pendulum has kind of swung too far where we've been disconnected from our food and it's, it's got to come back and it's been exciting to kind of see the support build around that. I'm Ronald Rayo. I'm an associate professor of architecture here at the University of California, Berkeley. We're testing how do you make a very large object with a very small 3D printer. We don't know if 3D printing will be a viable process for the building industry, but we believe so. And this is what we're researching. This is about speculation and investigation. I think one of my focuses when I teach students is that I'd like them to know that design isn't shopping. I'm looking at milkweed as a building material. It's good at acoustic dampening, thermal insulation, absorbing oil. They can draw inspiration from the world around them, from art and from theory, and they can be innovative. Live from the CBS Bay Area studios, this is KPIX 5 News. When we first met Raymond Lacey, he had just been accepted to UC Berkeley, and the adjustment to campus life can be hard for first-generation college students. We first met Raymond, a high school senior with major responsibility caring for his younger brother, born with cerebral palsy and epilepsy. Three out of five first-generation college students don't get a degree within six years. Raymond Lacey! But he stuck with it, becoming the first in his family 
to graduate from college. Be able to call myself an alumni is something that I've been dreaming about and never thought would be a reality for so long.